Hello and welcome to five minutes tutorial on RF Pro. In this tutorial, we will talk about some advanced techniques to perform RF PCB analysis with RF Pro. Now remember one, two, three, subscribe to the channel, enable the notifications, like and share the video with your friends and colleagues. All right, let's spend some time in understanding few advanced capabilities, which will be of your great use when you deal with these kind of simulations with RF Pro. All right, to illustrate those points, I have the same board file which we have used in last couple of videos. The first thing I would like to talk about is the S parameter port and pin pairing. Now, if you recall in the last video, we had this balloon and we assigned an S3P file to that balloon. Now, while doing these kind of assignment, it's very important to understand the connection of the pin names or the pin numbers which you have on the layout assembly versus the port in RF Pro. Now in this particular case, you see pin number one, which is connected to this particular trace is belonging to port number one in this S parameter file. Pin number three is connected to port two and pin number four in the layout is connected to port three of this S parameter file. Now, if this is correct, then the connection and the resulting graph which you generate out of RF Pro will be good. But in case if this mapping is not correct, you will get a wrong result. Now, you can do this mapping very easily. Well, these uh, pin names cannot be changed because they are part of a layout database. However, the port number here is changeable. For example, if port two in my S parameter file is, is meant for this kind of pin, I can define that as two. Now, you see an error here. That's because now you have two port number twos, right? Now, this pin here, if it belonging to port number one in S parameter file, you can do it like one or you can do three. And if this belongs to port number one, then you can make it one. So as long as you have a continuous port numbers here and you are sure that this mapping is correct, you will see a green tick. And now you have the right connections as you need for your PCB assembly. And it will guarantee you will have the right results coming out of RF Pro. A very useful technique, right? So always take note of this. Now the second technique or second tip I would like to give is about the component models. So now here in our database, you can see in last analysis, I added a couple of inductors. Now, whenever I add this couple of inductors, they belong to the same group. Hence, you will get one group and then you have the corresponding components inside that group. Now, when you assign the value, you are assigning that value to this whole group. For example, in last video, we assigned zero ohm. So zero ohm gets assigned to L67 and zero ohm gets assigned to L68. Well, this may or may not what you want. So in case you want to have independent control on the values of these components, despite they uh, belonging to same group can be done very easily. For example, here I can pick L68 again and I can drag and drop it under component model. When I do so, RF Pro gives me a choice whether I want to add to existing group or create a new group. If I need the same value, I would add it to existing group. Otherwise, I will create a new group, like in this case here. So now I already have a separate instance of L68. I can go ahead and delete that in case there's a duplication. So now once we have both of these separate group, I can double click on this group and add another lumped element. And for example, make it 10 ohm or five ohm or whatever you want to give. You can give that value, click apply, click done. And now you have two independent groups, even if they are belonging to same group. Very, very useful for your practical board design where you might be fine tuning your impedance matching networks or um, you know any, any kind of uh, discrete component uh, value variations and so on. Now, another important tip uh, you note here, anything which you get named here, this is as per your PCB design database. So when you create an S parameter or, or test bench out of RF Pro, and you look at the equivalent disk schematic, you will see the same name appearing in the variable uh, you know, as a variable name. And this can be really hard to understand if you have 20, 30 components, because this name it doesn't give you a very insightful meaning and that can be a problem for you. Now, how do you simplify that? 
The answer is very simple. Whenever you add these component model, you can go ahead and give it whatever name you want. For example, I can give it a name something like series L1. I can give a name called series L2 or whatever name uh, by which you would really like to identify this component or this could be L100, L67, L68, whatever way you would like to see that in a schematic for easier identification. Now, once you do that and you create a test bench, you click OK and now you will see the same name in the component places as well as the variable a dialog which text created. Now you can identify these components rather easily and then you can have much easier time optimizing or tuning your design. So three very, very useful tips uh, which is very hard to find in any kind of manual or a document uh, which I explained to you in this video. And I hope these trips will be very, very useful when you go and perform your actual complex board analysis with RF Pro. Now that's all for this video. I have a lot more exciting content coming your way. So stay tuned and keep watching the tutorial and do not forget to give it a thumbs up. Leave your valuable comments below the video and share it with your friends and colleagues who might get benefited out of these tutorials. Thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned for next upcoming videos in this playlist. Wish you all the best in your design work.